Hi, I'm Danny and these are my diecast disasters. In this video I'm going to be taking this new 2020 64 Chevy Impala and I'm going to be making a post-apocalyptic monster style custom with it and I'm also going to be making a post-apocalyptic bunker or hideout diorama to place it on. Let's start by taking the car apart. The first thing I do is to drill out these posts here. And with that done, I can pry the bottom off of it and then take the rest of the car apart. I've also got the base from a diaper dragger here I'm going to be using. So I'm going to use my rotary tool just to cut the axle here and remove these rear wheels. Now I can take those cast parts and remove the paint with some poly stripper. So here are the stripped parts. Here's the plastic base from the Impala. I'll just pop the wheels out of that. I'm going to be replacing the original wheels with these big monster wheels so I'm going to use the base of the diaper dragger here to give me the height I need I'll just cut the front off it and now I can use some super glue and I'll glue it on underneath the chassis here there we go that's looking pretty good now I'll glue in an axle shaft just using some aluminium tubing here Here is the chromed interior of the car. I don't want that chrome on it, so I'm going to use a little bit of hot water and caustic soda to remove it. And here it is. Once it's been rinsed off and all the chrome is gone, now I'm going to glue it into place here on the chassis. And I've also used some tubing and some wire here to make some shocks for the rear. I'll just glue those into place as well. I'll also add a new axle shaft at the front here. And here you can see I've added a plate underneath the axle there and I've also made a bumper here with some sort of blades on it. Now that I'm happy with the fabrication of my base I give it a coat of black paint. I then painted it with a burnt iron colour and now I'm going to detail it in a couple of places. I'm just painting the, the grill in chrome here. I also paint the back lights here in chrome and later I'll paint over those in clear red. The motor I paint in a silver colour. I detail the interior, I paint the seats brown and I paint the dash and the steering wheel black. Once 
once I'm happy with the detailing there I can add some metallic weathering powders I start out with a silver weathering powder and then I add some metallic blue and burnt red And once I'd finished all of my detailing, it was given a coat of satin varnish. You can see I've added a black wash to the grill there, and I've painted some tears on the seats. Moving on to the body now, I began by painting it black. Here I've printed out some flames on some A4 paper. I use my craft knife to cut out the flames. And then I carefully use some sandpaper to sand the back of the paper down until it's just about see-through thin. Now I'm going to use some watered down PVA to apply it to the front of my Impala. As I apply more of the watered down glue, the paper will go quite soft and I can shape it into the lines of the body and around the wheel arch here. And this is what they look like once they've dried. Now I'm just going to paint in the door handles here in silver. I want my black paint to look a little bit faded, so I'm going to apply some white weathering powder here. Next I'm going to paint in some small rust patches here and there.
And then over the top of these, I apply a little bit of rust weathering powder. This was all fixed with a matte varnish. Here are the Bigfoot wheels I'm going to use. They're green light ones. I'm not very keen on those white rims there though, so I'll begin by painting those black. And to colour them I'm just going to use weathering powders. I start out with a silver weathering powder. Next, some rust weathering powder. Now a little bit of black, just to re-blacken the outside of those larger wheels. And finally, I finish them off with some dust weathering powder. These were sealed with a matte varnish. So here are all the parts of our post-apocalyptic Impala ready to go back together. You can see I've made some new pipes for the rear there as well. But before we take a look at the finished car, we'll crack on and make the diorama. Unfortunately, I've lost some footage of the beginning of this diorama, but basically I made my base out of some lumps of foam. And here is a little entrance in an old pipe that I've made out of some cardboard tube and some foam. This is some footage from a previous video, but it's the same technique. I'm just using a blunt pencil here to carve in my bricks. And then I use a craft knife to cut out bricks here and there and make the wall look like it's crumbling. You just have to use your imagination and think about old crumbling brick walls that you've seen or look at some reference pictures. My crumbling brick walls were glued into place on the base there and I also carved some cobblestones into the ground. So here's where my footage is caught up. You can see I've built up around the bricks and the cobblestones with some filler here. I've allowed that to dry. And now I'm going to paint my cobblestones. I'll start out with some grey paint. I'm using acrylic paints here. They're pretty cheap. It's like $2 a tube. I don't recommend using solvent-based paints with the foam as some of them can make it dissolve. Once you've painted over with a layer of acrylic though, it's fine. You can use whatever you want. Next I'm going to paint my brick walls in a tan colour. 
I want them to look like mud bricks. Next I paint in a few different coloured cobblestones. Next, a darker brown wash is applied to my wall. I'm alternating the wall and the cobbles here so that the paint jobs have plenty of time to dry in between. A black wash is applied to the cobbles. They're then given a dry brushing with some white paint. Next I'm going to make some tread marks where I want to park my post-apocalyptic Impala. So I've poured on some fine sand here and I'm going to roll a couple of wheels through to make the tread marks. To set this in place I'm going to use some watered down PVA but notice what happens if I just try to drip it straight on. So what I have to do is spray down the sand with some water and isopropyl alcohol first. And now you'll see that the PVA just flows straight through it. Next I'm going to add a few little rocks, so I paint on some big splotches of PVA glue. And for my rocks I'm going to use some scree that I've collected from up in the mountains. I really like it because it always breaks with really cool angles on it and no matter how big or small the pieces are they look like realistic rocks. Once the glue had dried, I paint the rocks with some grey paint.
They were then given a wash with some blue paint and a wash with some black paint. And then dry rushed with some white. Next I painted the ground, I'm using a burnt umber. Here it is once the burnt umber paint had dried. Now I'm going to put my old rusty pipe with the bunker entrance in it in place. I start out with a little bit of filler. The pipe is put in place. Some more filler is applied. Once this was well dried, I painted it brown. Next it was time to add some dirt. I begin by painting on PVA glue all over the ground areas that I've painted with the burnt umber. And once this was all covered in the glue, I sprinkle on some dried dirt. This is dirt I've collected from my garden. I've dried it in the oven and then sieved it. Once the glue was all covered with a good layer of dirt, I can tip off the excess. And then I saturated it all in some scenic cement. You can see my spray bottle here is a little bit sad. It's been all gunked up with the scenic cement. But anyway, here is the saturated diorama. So I'll leave that to dry. Got a couple of old car bodies here I'm gonna use. I'll just chop up this surf and turf a little bit more. I then use an old grinding burr on my rotary tool just to roughen up the surfaces of the cars. I'm not really trying to carve any dents into them or anything, I just want to rough them up so they're not so smooth.
and I give them both a rust effect paint job. I'm going to put these in place here on my diorama. So I use some big splodges of PVA to do this and then I sprinkle some of my dry dirt over the excess glue. Here's a little entrance ramp that I've made out of styrene. This was also given a rusty paint job. I then applied some gunmetal weathering powder to it to give it a bit more of a metallic look and bring out the highlights. And I finish it off with some ground up pastel that I sealed with a clear coat. Here are some smaller chunks of bricks that I've carved out and I've painted them with the tan paint. Again, I'm going to use some big splodges of PVA to glue them in place. I want the glue to squeeze out past the edges of the bricks. And then I can sprinkle some more of the dried dirt over it. The dark brown wash is added to these bricks as well. Here I've got some more ground up pastels and I've mixed them with a few drops of isopropyl alcohol. And I'm going to apply these over my rusty car bodies. Here yeah, are some old rusty dented drums that I've made out of aluminium can. Next I sprinkle a light layer of dirt over most of the model. I just use a dry brush here to remove it from the areas where I really don't want too much dirt. And the whole thing is saturated again in scenic cement. And here it is once it's dried. You can see that thin layer I sprinkled on at the end has helped to grubby everything up a bit. Now it's time to start adding some grass. 
First I paint on some glue where I want my grass to be. The first layer of grass I'm going to put down is some scatter grass. I'm using two different blends here. One of them has some little flowers in it and the other one is a light green. Once the initial scatter grass layer has dried, it's time to add some static grass. I'm going to add this in different patches. I start out with some longer wild grass blend. Once I have all my patches of glue painted on where I want my wild grass to be, I use my static grass applicator to apply it. Once this had dried, I paint on some more glue around where I want to apply some more grass. This time I'm going to be using a shorter blend that has some little leaves in it as well. And again, applying the grass with the static grass applicator. I grind up some dark green pastel. And then I'm going to use a dry brush to apply some of this around the lower half of my mud brick wall. This will look like the sort of mold or algae that starts growing. Next, a little bit of a lighter green. And finally, I apply some brown pastel as well.
I've got some wee dried roots here. Just going to cut out some small sections and I'm going to glue them here and there coming out of my wall. Now for some trees that I've made. I won't show you how I've made them in this video because it's already pretty long. Yeah, I'm just gluing them in with some more PVA. I wanted to make a few vines coming down the wall so I'm going to use a little bit of twine here I'll just use my fingers to tweeze it apart Next I dip my tweezed apart twine into some PVA glue and then I can sort of form it into a few vine strands. And then I just applied some flocking to this. There we have a vine or ivy and here it is applied to my wall. Well that was quite a bit of work but finally our diorama base is basically finished. Now we can go back and take a look at our custom impala. But just before we do we'll take a moment to look back and be reminded of what we started with. Here is our 2020 Hot Wheels Chevy Impala. It's a pretty cool chunky looking car I reckon. But we'll see what it looks like after the apocalypse. And here it is. Our custom post-apocalyptic monster style Chevy Impala. It's looking pretty mean now with those huge wheels and that chunky suspension system. It's got a cool black paint job with some flames at the front. It's been detailed and had the blade bumper and some new custom pipes added. I have to say this is one of my favourite cars I've done. I think it looks really cool with that mean exaggerated stance and the chunky lines of the Impala. You can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Before I go I'll say a big thanks to everyone for the great comments on my videos and an extra special thanks to my awesome Patreon supporters who help to support the channel through Patreon. They donate a few dollars each month which goes towards the channel and helps me keep making videos like this for you to enjoy. I'd like to welcome my latest patron Ed Ostrander. Thank you Ed for the support, I really appreciate it. 
If you'd like to help support the channel as well, you can check out my Patreon page. There's a link in the description below. At the moment, I'm saving up all my Patreon donations so that I can buy a 3D printer and I'll be able to make some videos using that. There's also a link where you can get 10% off Starbond glue, which I've used all the way through this project. Thanks heaps for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe and click the bell so that you get notifications and updates. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your mates.